Um, we are on skill number four of Eric Worries. And again, I have got to go back and find. Uh, it says it's recording. It is recording, but now I can't find my uh, screenshot. Okay, here we go. Sorry for being unprepared today, but glad you guys are on the call with us. So we are in skill number four on follow-up. And I am loving going back through these skills and this book again, just reiterating in my mind what we need to do, what I personally need to do to become a professional at network marketing and be the best upline I can be, the best uh, uh, distributor for my customers I can be. And, and so today, even though I feel like I, I really do a fairly good job at follow-up, I'm reminded again how much better I can get at it. And the better I get at it, the better the results we're going to, all of us, the better results we're going to get, whether it be attracting new customers, attracting new distributors. And so I just want to start by saying what, first and foremost, do you have a system when it comes to follow-up? Um, and so let, let's throw out some systems. We've got a, for many, many years, I just used a notebook. And every time I got a new customer um, or a prospect, I had a prospect notebook and have a customer notebook, I will print out a form that gives information about my prospect or I would print out a form, the order form for my customers. So whether or not we're doing follow-up with our customers or follow up with our prospects, we have to have some system to track our communication with them. Uh, just thanks to Sandy Dial, just a year ago, or not even a year ago, probably six months ago, I started with Teamsy. I love it, absolutely love it, would recommend that as well. But I always go back to what my husband always says, Scott always says, systems are a dime a dozen. Doesn't matter which one you use, you just better use one. So let me see by hand how many of you guys have some solid system that you use to connect with your customers and your prospects. And you know right where you are with them. All right, I can only see a few hands, but I'm hoping if you don't have a system and you are watching this video, put some notes in the um, chat section. I want to make sure or follow up with your upline or connect with me or whoever you see on this call. But you, we have to, first and foremost, have a system if we want to be successful at this business. Um, I want to say Shelly uses like a spreadsheet. Uh, I want to say Amy uses Amy Baker. And I think also Allison used like the notes section. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you use, but I know that we have to use some type of system what, that we can actually track. We know exactly what's been said and where, this, where we are in that process. So that's our tracking system. We also have to have a planning system. And I'm going to share a, a picture with you guys in a minute. Um, I'm on our Team Extreme website. This is under the skills section, skill number four. And I, in there will also be a planning form. I just took what's on this planning form and I put it in um, a note document on my phone so that I can have it on my phone um, and can have it digitally. But somehow, some way, we also have to have a, a system for planning week in and week out. Um, I know Karen uses the, when we started this chat a year ago, we had um, a form that we used. I know Karen, you still use that form. I think some other people do. How many people have a planning document that literally on Monday, you plan out who you're going to connect with for the week? Does everybody have some sort of plan? All right, we're going to go over that planning document um, because to me, those two are crucial to have a system to plan and a system to track. If we're planning and tracking, most likely we're going to get the execution part in that falls in between. Um, 
So when I read through this chapter again on skill number four, follow-up, one is we have to have a system, a follow-up system. Number two, we have to always know to set up the next exposure. And that's where that planning form comes in. When I make a plan, I track the plan. If I'm not, if I see I didn't follow up with that person, I've captured, oh, here's someone who was on my plan. I didn't connect with them. Next week, they're the first people I'm gonna connect with. And it also gives us an opportunity to say, here's what my next exposure is going to be. So I was working on that plan today thinking, okay, here are these people. Here's who the next exposure is going to be inviting them to our, our Peachtree City event on Thursday. So make sure that you're doing from exposure to exposure. You're not just having a bunch of people in a list, but you know where you are in that, in that process and what their next exposure is going to be. Um, the third thing, and, and he kind of talks about this in the chapter, but I listened to a phenomenal um, call podcast yesterday, and I thought, man, I'm incorporating that into our training today. Here was a great statistic. They said, when you take someone through 11 to 14 question process, not that we drill them, but in the course of a conversation, if we get in between 11 and 14 questions, our chances of converting them to a customer or to a distributor is 25% greater. 25% greater if we walk them through 11 to 14 questions. And so here's, I'm gonna walk down in that bottom left corner is the, is the question process. Um, but let me finish this, the, the four areas that he talks about in this chapter. Lastly, he says we gotta condense our exposures. So if I look at, do a little bit of inventory on myself, on this whole follow-up process, I can tell you right now, I have a system. I know what my next exposure is. I do, I think, a pretty good job of asking questions. But that last point four, condensed exposures, I feel like that's the area I really need to personally hone in on. I may let the time between one conversation to the next or one exposure to the next exposure be too long and sometimes when you let that happen you lose the person and i can name you about three people it's my own fault i let that from exposure to exposure the time lapse and i need to learn to really condense it more and that's really being more consistent with my plan and actually executing the plan that i have um, so i want you to think about because i'm going to ask this question at the end where of those four areas from chapter, this whole skill number four, do you see yourself needing more work on? Do you need to hone in on your system and get a better system or refine your system? Do you need to get better at knowing what your next exposure is? So if you look to the left, that first box, there's different ways to have exposures. And I'm gonna challenge you guys, Let's mix it up so someone's not a phone call, a phone call, a phone call. And instead, invite them to an event. Share a video, an article, some research. Invite them to a conference call. Do a three-way call maybe with someone you think they might resonate with better. You know, that third-party validation. You know, there's attraction calls. This is one of the things I absolutely love about um, Miracle. Miracle is a master at getting people to do three-way calls. And, um, and so we could do an attraction call. We can do a launch call. Um, there's just many. Another way is just I, I'm exchanging boxers with Amy um, Baker right now about a gal who she wants, to sh wants me to kind of share the business. And she said, you know, you guys have the same Enneagram. And so... You know, that was her talking point when talking with this gal and trying to get a three-way call that I can't wait to meet her person. Um, maybe giving people samples. Brenda, I know you give away shake samples all the time. And I literally am working on a new gal right now. Hopefully, we'll join my team because of a shake as well. So don't miss the opportunity of mixing up these exposures 
Um, lastly, it's just meeting someone for coffee. I've got somebody I keep happening to meet at the hair salon the last three times I've gone. I mean, how weird is that, you know? And so the last thing I said when I left the salon, let's get together for coffee. So think about all these different ways that we can set up new exposures and mix them up. And then back to condense the exposures, I'm skipping 11 to 14 questions because we're going to go into that next. But condense the exposure. You know, we want, it really, when we're talking to someone, we kind of want to pack it in, I would say, a two-week process of hopefully from start to finish. I'm here to tell you I don't do that well. I do stay connected, but I... I think my chances are going to be better if I condense those exposures. Okay, so this 11 to 14 process uh, questions, I absolutely love this podcast. And so he talked about if they've done the research, if you can get in that amount of questions, don't go over 14, try to at least get 11. He said, what you're going to do is you're going to increase your chances by 25%. So here's the process that he takes you through. First, he says those introduction, introductory questions. You know, what is it that you say to people? Make sure you've got those questions. And here was a few that he threw out. You know, how are you? You know, what's your name? You know, what those simple introductory questions. So right there, if you think about it, if each of these questions, these types of questions take two per type of question. You're, you're into that 10 to 14 range. Then he said, begin mirroring that question. So, you know, how someone responds, you respond back to them. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Or, you know, it's that responding back, that exchange of kind of niceties in the beginning to get into a conversation. You know, I can think of somebody right now off the bat, she is horrible <laughs> when it comes to these. And every time she takes me off guard because she never starts with, oh my gosh, how's your day? Do you have a few minutes? You know, when I'm calling someone, I always start with, do you have a few minutes? But I'm thinking of this one gal, when I call her, she calls me, boom, she just right into, hey, blah, 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 blah. And there's something about warming somebody up, you know, and saying, how, how, how was your Thanksgiving? Tell me a little bit about that. You know, so make sure you get in a little introduction questions, a little mirroring questions, kind of softens and gets the conversation, kind of like gets the blood flowing. Then have some really good transition questions. He talked away about, you know, oh my gosh, by the way, did I tell you about X, Y, Z? By the way, did you hear about this? Oh my gosh, I thought of you. That's kind of what I say for the transition question. Oh my gosh, I was listening to this podcast the other day and I thought about you. Have you heard or do you know? So think about what's your two or three lines that you use that transition into getting them into a conversation. Um, then the follow-up questions. So you kind of get into the conversation with that transition question. Then the follow-up questions. What you're doing is trying to hone it in further, bring them into the topic. Did you have a chance to list, to watch that video? Could you believe X, Y, Z, fill in the blank? Did you have a chance to read that article I sent? You know, so the follow-up questions just kind of hones it in closer and closer to the conversation that you want to have. Once you get in, hopefully that gets you into the conversation about Juice Plus or about the Juice Plus business. Then that next thing is those clarifying questions. So, so if I hear you right, and I'm gonna use Amy, I don't know if I, I can only see about four people right now, but I don't know if Amy's on the call, but she was kind of sharing with me a great conversation she had with a prospective distributor and the prospective distributor is quitting work and she's introducing the Juice Plus business to her and the, the gal said, you know, I don't have enough brain space right now, but I'm interested, can we connect in January? 
So come January, you know, so, so I guess a clarifying question in that situation would be is, I totally understand. You got a lot on your plate between the holidays, you know, quitting work, wrapping everything up there. So if it's okay, how about if we do a three-way call come January? Will that work for you? What, um, actually, what Amy did, she's having an event in January, and she said, how does January 6th look on your calendar? Let's reconvene and reconnect then. Can you come to my event? So what she did was clarify. When you clarify, what you're doing is you're solidifying that next exposure. So that clarifying questions are really powerful. And I think as I'm looking through them, I don't always do that very well. I think I make assumptions versus really clarifying what our next steps are, what our next exposure is. And then he talks about bridging questions and he uses a comparison to get to the point even closer by comparing. And, and here would be a bridging question. Would it be better for you to join us on the 6th? I'm going back to Amy Baker's um, prospect. Um, or would you like to maybe say earlier in the month, um, maybe around the second or the third, do a three-way call? I'd love for you to, to chat with Elaine. So that would be kind of a bridging the questions even more. You're kind of getting, you're refining it a little bit more and you're kind of seeing which route you'd rather go. And then, um, then the last set of questions are deeper questions. Um, and, and some of the things um, that he would use for illustration of deeper questions. Tell me about how you feel. What are your thoughts about possibly joining me in this business? Or how do you feel about, you know, going ahead and getting started on Juice Plus? Or um, is it fair to say that you want to wait a little bit? You are interested. <coughs> so those deeper questions just keep bringing you in, bringing it in to the point that you're able to, at that point, go ahead and ask for the sale. Go ahead and ask for an opportunity to talk to them about um, becoming a distributor. So those questions, really getting good and thinking through those types of questions and really getting that process. That process from introduction, <coughs> excuse me, to mirroring, transitioning, follow-up, clarifying, bridging, and then deepening. What you're doing is you're, you're controlling the conversation, yet they're the ones who are talking because you're asking questions. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm going to have to get a drink. You're controlling the conversations with your questions. And so um, that's just going to help you guide versus how many of, and, and I'm included with this, I walk away thinking, gosh, I really didn't get them to the point I needed to get them to. And you've kind of lost that opportunity. Now it's going to require another exposure. And then you kind of got to start that process over again. So the better we get about getting them into a good conversation, regardless of which exposure we choose, the quicker we're going to be toward our end result. Um, and then lastly, that fourth box, you know, the goal is here, our goal is threefold. Number one is to deepen and develop the relationship with our follow-up, whether that be follow-up with a prospect or follow-up with a customer. What we're doing is building relationship and we're providing education. You know, we aren't just selling a product. We are, we're locking arms with people on this health journey. And so part of that process is education. And the more educated they are about Juice Plus, the more solidified the customer we're going to have. And then thirdly is really understanding where they are in this process and understanding what their challenges are, what their issues are, because what that's going to come across is we really do care. And it's bigger than, here, take a capsule and let me make some money. This is about, we are health educators, we are coaches, we are supporters, we are friends, and we are people who care about relationships and care about people. And when they know 
we're seeking a relationship, we want to gift them with education and we truly want to understand them, they're going to feel it. And that follow-up process is going to be fun versus, oh my gosh, I don't know about this. It makes me nervous. I don't like doing it. Instead, we're going to embrace it. One is because we've gotten good at it. And two is we know what our goal is. Developing a relationship, providing education, and truly seeking to understand mm -hmm. that. So, okay, that's, that's kind of the follow-up. I know I didn't get into specifics. We can talk specifics if you feel like, you know, when it comes back to your system, you know, here's the question. Does it remind me, does it track everything I'm, all the communication I'm having? Is it reminding me to set up the next exposure and reminding me when it's time to provide that exposure? Um, it, it, does it allow for me a way to, to really get into great conversations and track what those conversations are so I can keep moving them along? And does it hold me accountable um, to really condense these exposures? And then lastly, am I truly doing it? Am I really following up with my customers and my prospects and my distributors? Am I tracking to make sure my distributors are moving to the next level? Am I connecting with them on a weekly basis? Am I connecting with my customers at least on a quarterly basis? And then am I connecting with prospects every single day? And if the answer isn't yes to weekly connections with my distributors, yes to quarterly connections with my customers, and yes to daily connections with my prospects, then our system is broken down somewhere and we need to tweak it, either get a whole new system or tweak the one we have so that we know without a doubt our three areas of people are really getting touched on a consistent basis. All right, so let's go ahead and let's chat. I'm going to stop the recording.